The first exoplanets were discovered almost 30 years ago. So we're talking in the 1990s when astronomers first figure out that they can use the light coming from a star that's hosting a planet and small deviations in that light to see if there is a planet orbiting. So it took about a decade of efforts to discover this very first planet. So astronomers thought that it could do something like this for a while, but it really took the building of a good enough telescope or good enough instrumentation to detect this first planet. The next few planets then happened within a year. A few years later, we are at tens of planets. A few years after that, the hundreds. And that's just looking at the very small part of the sky. We actually know that there are hundreds of billions of planets, even if we just look at our, our own galaxy, the Milky Way. Planets form from dust and gas around young stars. So when you have a star like the Sun, when it is a million years old or so, it's surrounded by a disk of dust and gas. That dust can start to coagulate together to form something like an Earth-like planet. Now, if that rocky planet or rocky core is big enough, it can also start sweeping up some of the gas from the disk, and then you end up forming a planet like Jupiter or Neptune. So this disk uh, forms as a product of the star forming. A star forms from an interstellar cloud starting to implode, to collapse in on itself. But this cloud always have a little bit of spin or rotation, and that needs to be preserved as the collapse happens. If you put all of that spin into the star, that's going to spin so fast that it just gets torn to pieces. So instead, how nature solves this problem of conserving the spin or angular momentum is by putting some of it in a disk around the star. And this disk is then where planets form. Earth is the only planet we know of that has life on it. But we actually don't know exactly what it is that makes the Earth so special. But there are a few things that most people agree upon is needed for anything like Earth-like life. One is that you have access to liquid water. So all life on Earth depends on liquid water in one way or another. And we think that's for a good reason. Having access to liquid water is key. The other is that you need some of the building blocks of cells of our bodies uh, to be in that water, and those are different kinds of organics. At the minimum, if you want to make a habitable planet, is that you have, on the one hand, water on top of a rocky planet, and then some interesting organic building blocks on the other. And we have good evidence that the Earth uh, was like that from very early on in its history. But perhaps so was Mars. And Mars does not, as far as we know, have life on it. So is this enough for a planet to be habitable? That is something that we don't know yet.